Hi everyone. It is Tuesday. It is February 25th, 2020, and I hope everyone had a beautiful day in the Lord. It's about 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and I'm going to bring you a devotion and some scripture, but first, as always, I like to say the Our Father. So please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father, so much. I love you. Okay, this is called The Hope of the Faithful. And the reading is from Psalm 16, verses 1 through 11. And it says, Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Uncertainty abounds in our generation. The challenges that we face politically, financially, morally, militarily, and spiritually seem at times to be insurmountable. We need the kind of wisdom that David m modeled in Psalm 16 every single day. He cried out to God in prayer pleading with the Lord to protect him, believing that he would. This is why he declared, in you I put my trust. The Lord was David's refuge. It was not the people he led, the places that he lived, or the pleasures that he enjoyed that comforted his heart when he faced uncertainty in his life. He proclaimed clearly and boldly that only in the Lord did he place his complete trust and hope. The story of God's activity in his life is what created and affirmed his complete trust in God. He testified in this Psalm that God, that only God is good. He had been faithful to bless him and walk beside him continually, even through the threat of death. With confidence, David knew God would show him where to go in the future and would never leave his side. Whatever uncertainty or fear that you face today, it is God alone who can see you through it. Call upon him. Review your life and see the work of the divine artist. God himself, who has been working in your life masterfully. 
Whatever your future holds for you, know that God will show you where to go and will empower you to go there when you are refreshed in his presence daily. All glory to God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, David, I love to read the Psalms because David, to me, in the Bible is the best example of a Christian because, you know, he's imperfect, but yet he reveres God. He's in awe of God. He fears God. He loves God. He knows all of God's attributes, the greatness of God. And he also knows the fierce judge that God is and how he's almighty and all powerful. So you see, David is like, to me anyway, the only true character in the Bible that we can look at and see our own selves in him. And, you know, when David made a mistake or David fell, he was, he was convicted in his mind and he went to his knees and he pleaded for forgiveness and he knew that if he didn't, come before the Lord in repentance that it was it would come back to him okay we see throughout the whole Bible that the Lord always tells us to come and place our burdens and our um, our obstacles our oppression the the bondage that we can't overcome he he tells us to put it at his feet so when we put it at his feet, you know, it doesn't mean that he's going to take it away all at once. No, we're going to, we're going to stay in touch with the Heavenly Father through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And together, we are going to press in and press in and chip away. And eventually, we are going to be freed from all those shackles and all those bonds. Sometimes, for some of us, a lot of them fall off immediately when you come to the Lord for salvation. And then we have some more to work out. And that, that's a process as you develop your relationship with the Lord. Okay, you develop that relationship with the Lord. And you get to know one another. See, he knows everything about you, but when you come to the Lord, now you is the beginning. It's like the first day of the rest of your life. You're going to now, you know, he's given you the Holy Spirit. That's the intercessor. That's the go-between between you and the Lord. And now you have that open line of communication. And, you know, you need that guidance, just like David always always walked in the presence of the Lord. It didn't mean that he was 100% perfect, but he always was listening, always was anticipating, feeling the Lord's presence on him and around him. David is a perfect example of a believing Christian. And if you're not a believing Christian, today is the day of salvation for you people the Bible stories the prophecies are flying off the page we are in tribulation this coronavirus is spreading rapidly and it's only a matter of time I believe that everyone on the planet is going to be affected by this plague and there'll be more to come and if you're not right with the Lord and you pass away, you know, we're not, we're not promised our last breath. We all have an expiration date, you know. The Lord says, you know, we're born into a corrupt world. We all are going to die. The only thing is we don't know when. But the Lord knows he has that expiration date that only he can see. And if you're not made right with the Lord and you expire, you are not going to heaven. 
The Bible says no one can get to heaven unless they go through the sun and accept the sun. Okay? I'm going to put the salvation video right behind this. Now is the time, people. Don't wait. There really is not much time left for you to give your life to the Lord. Listen, everybody's going to serve somebody, right? If you're not, if you haven't come to the Lord, you're serving Satan. He's he's the um, uh, the the prince of this world right now. He's running things here. He is steering you and 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 leading you through the flesh but when you come to the lord jesus you switch teams you believe in jesus you believe he came to save you when he shed his blood on that cross and that blood that he shed is his atonement for you paying the price for you that's on the altar in heaven and when we come to jesus and confess our sins okay and we ask him to forgive us for all our sins he will be gracious to forgive us because not only did he die on that cross but he was born of a virgin and he rose from the dead in three days and he's going to give all the children that believe in him that same resurrection power when jesus comes for us we are going to resurrect just like he did and we're all going to get new bodies that we won't have pain anymore we won't be suffering we won't be walking uh, in conflict between our flesh and our conscience over the things that we do that we don't want to do all of that conflict will be gone forever okay and the nature our nature that we are born into now will be gone forever praise jesus hallelujah and thank you, Holy Spirit, that we have something to look forward to. We have our blessed hope, Jesus Christ. So people, if you're tired of living for this world, because this world has nothing to offer you, nothing but addictions and sorrow and baggage. It's like you're dragging bowling balls you have chains on your on your ankles dragging these huge boulders that's what it feels like walking in this world and a lot of times we get used to the the drag you get so used to the weight and the heavy load that you don't even feel it anymore it's like a way of life but when you come to jesus you feel yourself go up you feel that come off of you because you've been carrying around sins since you were born. If you lie, if you stole ever in your life, if you've had a lustful thought, if you've betrayed a loved one, you know, we've all done things, people, but they're all against God. And this is what we have to come forward and confess. But once we do, the Lord takes the blackboard eraser and he, he erases all those sins that you committed since you were born off that blackboard and he'll never look back on them again. And that alone is such a weight that comes off you, you cannot believe how wonderful that feels. I want that feeling for you. I had that feeling. I continue to have that feeling when I slip up and I ask the Lord to forgive me. I always take a shower in Jesus' blood. It's the best renewal. And you know you're right with the Father. And you will see heaven and you will see the loved ones who believed as you are going to believe now when it's your turn. Don't waste any time, people. As always, I want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I can't even say how much he loves you. Even if I said to the moon and back, it wouldn't be enough. Okay? 
We can't even wrap our minds around the enormity of the love because in this body, in this state that we're living in, we couldn't handle the enormous feelings of love. But when we get to heaven, our bodies will be in perfect position to receive the Lord's glory and the Lord's love. And we'll be able to live in that forever in peace. Okay? I want to bless you in Jesus' holy, holy name. Okay? I want you to enjoy the rest of your evening, people. And uh, don't click off. Follow along. Shalom.